Hello everybody. Uh, we're going to get move from exponential equations and move towards logs uh, today. So just a quick recap here of some ideas and an expansion of some ideas. Um, if we talk about bases, so what I mean by that is if you take the simplest of exponential function, uh, something like this, uh, the base is this thing here. It's your multiplier. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, if I make a little table of values, if x is 0, it's 2 to the 0, so that's 1 for y, and if it's 1, it's 2, if it's 2, this is 4, if it's 3, it is 8, if it's 4, it's 16. So what am I multiplying by each time? I'm multiplying by the base. Okay? So that's what I mean. So that's what a base is, and that's going to be very important. Um, I think I mentioned here common log bases. Uh, I'll mention the common bases here um, right away. Uh, base 2 is very common because that's a doubling in size. So common bases here. Um, oh, we'll stick that color. Common bases will be base 2 because you often talk about doubling time, for example. Uh, base uh, 1 half is actually very common uh, because you often talk about half-life, how long it takes for half the so of something to kind of go away. That's when it's decreasing. Um, this one, by the way, has an alternative. When you're looking at fractions like that, remember, 1 half is the same as 2 to the negative 1, which means that the equation, instead of being written like this, be written like this. That's the same thing. Think about that. Uh, other common bases is base 10. Uh, that's used for things that grow very rapidly, earthquakes uh, and the such sound, where the difference between a very low sound and a very high sound or very low earthquake, low energy earthquake and high energy earthquake is massive. So that's when you're going like, so that's kind of a, a a base 10. It's, it's used because we that's our counting system. You go from tens to a hundreds to a thousands, etc. etc. It's order of magnitude stuff. Maybe I can add that. When you talk about that, you're talking about that base. Uh, another one here, and this one is actually the kind of new one. Uh, for most of you, is base E. And I'll talk more about that with the, uh, the higher level. But base E is roughly equal to 2.71828. And it's an irrational number. It keeps going like that. It's like pi. There's no repeating kind of system of to these numbers. Uh, it's a very, very important uh, number in mathematics. And it has to do with growth. So these things grow like this. And this one is used uh, particularly in calculus. But its growth rate, which is its slope, always matches the y value. If you don't get that, that's okay. That'll be really important in calculus. Okay? So those are the common ones. So if you see E, don't treat it like it's an unknown. It's actually a number. It's on your calculator. You don't have to memorize it, that it's 2.71828. But it is a number, just like pi. Okay? So those are the bases. Um, inverse function. So I guess the question comes up. It's like, uh, as, as a, before we get to exponentials and logs, uh, if I give you a function like this, a very basic function like this, which is a quadratic, the simplest of quadratics, what is the inverse function? And we've talked about that before. Okay, well, this one's a little tricky because as far as this having an inverse 
it does not really, if I don't restrict the domain, so let's say x is going to be greater than 0. So what does this look like? It would look like this. It's like half a parabola, something like that. So what would the inverse look like? Let's write it here. Okay, that's when you swap the x's and the y's and you, sw you solve. So if you don't remember that, uh, I can do it real quick. This is the original. I don't know what happened there. So the inverse, you would swap the x's and the y's. And then you would isolate. So this is now the inverse. It's not the same function anymore. Um, and then you swap it so you get this. Now because I've restricted it plus or minus, that's a problem. Uh, but it isn't because I've restricted the domain for x to be greater or equal to 0. So therefore, it does indeed have an inverse function because it is a one-to-one -one function. And then I'll just take the positive part. So what it looks like, if I change color here for a second, is this one would look like this. It's essentially a reflection on the y equals x line because you've swapped the y's and x's. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Uh, you remember something like that. So the question that I want to look at right now is if you have something like this, what's the inverse of that? Right? So what it looks like the function is you might think oh it looks just like that quadratic but it isn't it climbs much much faster and on this side it simply gets closer and closer to uh, zero but never quite gets there okay again y equals zero is the asymptote I believe I mentioned that before so what is the inverse of this thing Okay. So you have something like y equals 2 to the x. So we don't write the, the, the function notation just as an equation. And we have this. How do you switch them? So you can, you, like, so the inverse, what would it be? Well, it would be x equals 2 to the y. That's the inverse. Right? But then how do you rewrite it so that it's y equals? Mm -hmm. Well, we just invented, in mathematics, a new way to write that. So that it's like, okay, well, what, what is y equal to? And the way we write it is with logarithms, or just log for short. So what we do is we rewrite it this, and what I'm about to write are the same. Okay, it's just a different way. Just like over here, um, these two are the same, it's just that I've rearranged things. So what does it look like back to log uh, to the exponentials? You write it like this: log base two of x. Okay, so that is essentially. I want to highlight it. These two equations are exactly the same. It's just written so that on the left hand side you have a different. Uh, subject. So that those are the same things. So what it looks like on paper is it's a reflection. So it looks like this. So it's a reflection on the y equals x line. Like that that's what a logarithm looks like so what the purpose of that is that it undoes what the exponent does so if I were to rewrite that the inverse is log base 2 of x okay note here let's get into our colors note if I just write this like this log x if I don't write anything here it's assumed that it's base 10. 
uh, if I write it like this, okay, that's called the natural logarithm, okay, or ln, if I can spell. Although I would never write this, but that's what it sounds like when you say it. Okay, uh, the natural logarithm, the base is e. Okay, so if you see either of those, uh, it's base 10 and base e, and that's what's on your calculator. Okay, so important here, because if I don't write it, it's base 10 or base e. If it's another base, um, then... Uh, I would write that. So inverse of exponential equations. So if I take an example here, uh, if I write y equals, so this is the function, uh, y equals uh, 3x. Let's just take the simplest one. What would the inverse look like? Uh, I would simply rewrite it using uh, that inverse system. So this would be uh, y equals log base 3 of uh, x. That would, that's what the inverse is. If I have y equals 3x, um, well, actually, let's change that. Just kind of 10 to the x, 10 to the 2x. Let's do that, okay? Uh, then the inverse would be, I won't get to the uh, final form right away, but it's the original base, uh, the exponent goes here, then you write log, the base goes here, and whatever's on the left side of the equation goes here, right? That's just rewriting it like that, okay? Then I would swap it out, so... So perhaps uh, I would write that because it's the inverse. So y equals log base 10 x divided by 2, like that. That would be the inverse, okay? So it's very important here that you kind of, again, I'm going to write it out again. Uh, if you have something written like this, y equals... Uh, b for base to the x, it is the same thing as writing x equals log base uh, b of y. Those are the same things. It's just a different way of writing it so you can isolate this. Now some of you might be saying, hold on, hold on. When we had this before, we needed to solve these types of problems. And you said you can write it like this. I think you remember that. Okay? Turns out that these are also the same. It's a change of base formula, and I'm just defaulting to make it a base 10 because that's on your calculator. Um, it, there's more to it than that, and higher level need to know that, but. Um, and need to be able to change the base like that. Uh, but that'll be a separate one for them. For uh, SL students, you just need to be able to rewrite them, and they won't get too complicated as far as like what the inverse looks like. So you need to, to, be, to know that they're the inverse, logs and exponents, and that, that general kind of highlighted equation there you need to be able to rewrite that. Common log bases, well, I've mentioned them before. Uh, it is uh, 2 uh, or 10 or e. Those are the biggies. I really can't think of any others. Um, anything else is for very peculiar pace, uh, uh, cases. So this I would write as log base 2. 
this I would just like write as log and this I would write as lawn. The log base 2 doesn't show up on your calculator immediately, but it's still pretty common. Um, the change of base, okay, that's what I was talking about there. I think for this uh, SL class, all you need to know is if you have something like this, log base 5 of uh, 7, and you wanted to solve that on your calculator, there is a way to do it. It, it is there. It's buried in your, your buttons, and you have to look for it. But know that you can rewrite it like this. And you can simply solve it like that. So uh, just remember, so if you have log uh, B, and then this is A, the general idea is that this is You, and I'm using base 10 because that's on my calculator, but also on your calculator is this. And check it out. You'll see that this is actually the same. It's odd, but when you divide logarithms, the bases turn out not to matter. So you can make them base anything as long as you convert it like that. So that allows you to solve something like this on your calculator. Okay? So... That's just a change of base. Now, I'll look up here um, quickly, perhaps some examples here of some things I want you to know. So first of all, if we go back to exponentials, I know this is going to be a longer session, but logs are new. If I give you something like this, 2 to the 0 0.3x, I'll give you a fairly complicated one. And this is from page uh, 315 of your textbook. I'm just taking an example. If I give you this function and they ask you, what's the y-intercept of this? Okay. Well, you let x equal to 0. If x equals to 0, um, it's 2 to the, zero, to the e. 0 0.3 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So y equals to 0 uh, is your y-intercept, okay? 2. Uh, let's say you want to know the horizontal asymptote, okay? You let x go off to infinity or x go off to negative infinity. It depends if it's a rising or decreasing um, function. So how can you tell? If the exponent is, has a negative in front of it, it's decreasing. Or if the base is a fraction, then it's decreasing. Otherwise, it's increasing. If it's increasing, uh, you're going to use this idea. And if it's decreasing, you're going to use this idea. Because if it's decreasing, it's going like that. So it's getting closer and closer to a horizontal line as x gets bigger and bigger. If it's increasing, it's actually the negative side. It's the when x is a large negative number, does it get to look like more and more like a horizontal line? So in this case, uh, it is increasing. So I think about this and I say, well, what if x was a big, big negative number? What happens to that? Well, e to the negative a million is going to be zero, essentially. That's what always happens. So 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 2 is going to be y equals minus 2. 3, let's say I want to know, is this growth or decay? Well, I've explained that to you. And this one is growth. And four, uh, what is the range of values? Because x can be anything, but the range. Again, think about it. You have, and I'm just going to sketch it out here. You have this function. And we said that it becomes more and more like a horizontal line at y equals negative 2. like that. It crosses the y-axis at 0. 
and it is increasing. So it's going to look like this. So guess what the range is? Y will be greater than negative 2. It will never actually touch it, and that's it. There's no limit to how large Y can get. So that's the range. Okay? So that's like one example of a question they ask you for these things, and it allows you to sketch it, although you do have your calculator. Okay? Um, what other one would be interesting here? They go through some modeling questions uh, with exponents. And I'm going to leave that as exercises. Um, actually, I just realized that was an HL question. Um, but that's okay. It's good for you to kind of take a look at this. Um, I might end it there and then continue with some other examples in the next video.